Welcome back, Tribe. I have an episode here from Gerald. I'm a 57-year-old man struggling with a midlife crisis. My only friend has left me. Let's get into it. Hello, guys. I'm just going to the supermarket. And this is like the the highlight of the week for me. And I usually go with my, my daughter. She's she's going to be 12 years, 12 years old soon. And uh, yeah, I think she doesn't want to come with me to the supermarket anymore. Because it's boring. You know, I asked my son. He never wants to go. He just wants to play his video games. Um, sometimes I can I can bribe him. I'll say, yeah, I'll get you this and this, this and that. And he'll come. And he has to be in a good, good mood as well. But usually my daughter always comes with me. But the last few times, you know, she says, Daddy, it's boring. I don't want to go there all the time. And... Uh, I realize that what what's the, the highlight of, of the week for me is boring for even a child. So, like, she's the only friend that I have. You know, now that I lost, well, since I lost my dad, she's the only one that I'm close to. Uh, my wife, if I asked her, I said, I called her, I said, would you like to come to the supermarket? And she shouted, no! And I thought, okay, well, She's always been. How are you going to expect people to, especially kids, be excited to go to the supermarket? If that's the highlight of your week, it's you. You you are the problem. You need to change everything you're doing. Why not go on fishing trips? Why not go on camping trips? Why not do anything other than literally the supermarket down the street? Well, sometimes you're the boring person. I don't know guys' full story, but let, let's see what he says. But if all you're doing is supermarket is the highlight of your week, you need to completely change up your life if you want to be more involved or have your kids be excited to be around you. A bad mood. Always in a bad mood. You know, I might ask her for something. I'm, I, I might need to help. You know, but today I washed, I washed the sink. I did all the plates, <sighs> cleared all the plates. And then I had to change my sheets, and I needed to find out where the, uh, the the clean sheets were. So I knocked on the door, and her, her immediate reply is, "Now what do you want?" Like when I hadn't called her for the whole day, I hadn't been in communication with her for for the whole day what do you mean now what do i want <laughs> my wife we just don't get on at all so how many boundaries was there that she stepped over like how many times did this guy say no in this relationship you just have to wonder because it's, if it's got to the point where he hasn't spoken to her all day and the moment he asks where the clean sheets are and she rips his head off like zero respect Zero love in the house. Kids don't want to hang out with you. Your only idea of like father time with kids is going to the supermarket next door. And you're surprised why your family is basically shunning you. Not even shunning you. Your kids are not taking interest in you because you're just not doing anything interesting with the kids. Go to the local park. Go play catch with your son. Take him out of the house. Why do you, why, how are you going to possibly compete with video games if what you're offering is the supermarket? Your daughter was interested for a little bit until you kept doing the same thing over and over and over again. You don't switch it up at all. He's got a bit of a defeatist attitude. Life has kind of beat him down. He's probably said yes too many times to too many things at the cost of his own needs and wants. And again, the respect followed. And now he's in this predicament where he's going to talk to us in his car in a parking lot about midlife crisis. Let's see. You know, uh, I don't think there's any future for me and my wife. We don't uh, get along. You're not leading. And, you know, forget about that for the moment. Thing is, you know, I don't have any friends, and the only friend that I have is, well, the person that I'm close to is my daughter. But now she's growing up, and I I know that one day she's gonna, you know, find a boyfriend. Maybe when she gets older, get married, or move out, move out of the house, you know, and get a flat with the friends. See what happens when you don't maintain your own identity in a relationship? This is what I tell you guys all the time. Do you see how this guy made family priority above himself and in the process of losing his family? This guy has no hobbies, nothing unique about him, nothing. Dad does nothing cool. All he does is go to a supermarket. I'm just kind of being facetious about all that stuff. Like you, like you can tell that he lives a very mundane, quiet life. He's a creature of habit. He kind of does the same things over and over again. There's no mystery to him, nothing interesting. And too consistent, and that's boring. You become boring. You go to the gym, go work out, go take up running, go take up biking. You know, go buy a sick bike and go biking around the park. Go pick up rock climbing, uh, a variety of things that you could do at the gym. 
tennis, something, anything. Like you need to go take up something, lead the way, show the family that you're far more than just sit at home being best friends with your kids or attempting to and take them out of the house to do something instead of the supermarket where you're going to buy groceries and browse the aisles for the same boring shit. And dude, this is some men do this to themselves. I feel for the guy because he's headed for a divorce. It sounds like his kids are growing up faster than he's able to keep up. He's already lost influence. He had very little to begin with. And now he's going to end up with essentially nothing at 57. He's going to have the same story we all hear about guys writing a comment section where, you know, post-divorce is going to lose almost everything. I don't know what people do. And uh, yeah, she'll be gone. And I feel that, I don't know, I don't know how to say this. Like I, I'm investing all my, um, my love into one person and then that person is going to leave. But what else do I do? You're supposed to love your children, aren't you? And your children love you. Um, some you can't love them if you don't love yourself first. Sometimes I think, should I also be in, investing, not investing, but putting my time into finding a woman? But then I think, what? You know, I, I'm just tired, tired of having relationships and then, and then the relationships like collapsing. And I tend to collapse along with the re relationship. So he's divorced already. You know, it takes a bit out of me. Um, my first relationship where I, I had a child in London, uh, that collapsed. And ever since, you know, my, I have a daughter. She's a kind of a strange daughter. You know, she doesn't, I don't see her. And we have not a good relationship. And uh, it's the old, the old scenario where you have, you're, you're, you're a bloke and you split up with your girlfriend and you have a, a daughter. And then she uses that daughter or son against you. Mm -hmm. you know telling her or him all kind of bs like you're such a bad person and uh that person grows up to hate you or at least not to like you and sometimes even to want revenge to want bad things to happen to you so um yeah i feel sad about that because i know that no matter what i do or what i say in her eyes i'm always a bad person always you know because i left her mum. yeah and i explained to her well, I never, I never left you. I just left your mum because your mum was, she was crazy. She was making me go crazy. Always arguing, always wanting this, wanting that. Money, of course, money. Always wanting money. And uh, I just couldn't take it anymore. In fact, it was when I was twenty-eight years of age. Kept having arguments with her, and I think I was heading towards a breakdown, a mental breakdown. In, in fact, on the occasion where I, I ended up in hospital, where the left side of my brain, I felt that it was numb. It was, zzz, and I couldn't feel it. And I ended up in hospital because of, um, it, it was, I think the, uh, the climax of all my stress was when I was shouting at her on the phone and I smashed the phone on the floor, uh, because we, we'd had an argument and it was a second of these type of arguments in one week. And I started to feel my brain all throbbing. It, it was actually in, I felt it was inside my brain. And, uh, so, so what I, I remember what I did was, um, I had my dog. And I hate to say this, but this is what happens when you're the nice guy with no frame. Like you get walked all over, you get used, you get it, this exact situation happens to millions of men being in experience with women and not knowing how to be their own person in a relationship. Like I told you guys, if you lose yourself and the relationship lose your identity, you lose attraction. It is what it is. You have to maintain being that interesting person that you were when you first met, because if you don't, things change for the worse. As the, this guy's exhibit A and millions of men like him who settle in this like new normal content creature of habit lifestyle where nothing really changes day to day. People can literally tell you exactly what you're going to do at what hour of the day. It's so boring, mundane, monotonous, soul sucking. And you expect to have any like blame, a match, something, a spark with your significant other. If you do that for years and years and years, come on. Back then, his name was Duga, a, a male German shepherd. And I drove to a big park. Well, it's actually Hampstead Heath in London. And I used to go there with my dog. And what I did is I was sitting down and the fact that he was panting in the back, I couldn't take it. I felt that the car was moving here and I just couldn't, couldn't handle it. Couldn't handle the, the motion. So I thought, okay, let me just take him out. I took him out and I sat on the grass and as I was laying down flat on the grass, I, I felt that the, the earth was actually sucking me in. It was sucking me into the, into the ground. I actually felt the motion of going down and I actually heard the sucking, sucking sound. And I quickly got up and I thought, what the hell is this? And I thought, okay, let, let me just go home. So as I was going home, I just listened to all the birds singing in the in the trees and it sounded like screeching. I was so hypersensitive. I, I couldn't take the noise. And and uh, I just quickly 
uh, drove home and I thought I was going crazy. I went underneath the covers. I, I went home to my bedroom and underneath the covers and I just covered myself. I didn't know how to cope. It was getting worse and worse and worse. I don't know what was happening to me. Another way for men to manage emotions and stress like this, always have a physical outlet. I tell you guys all the time, it's, it's not for anybody but yourself and especially mentally. The mental ability, the mental release you get, all every idea that comes through your head when you're working out, we're creatures of physicality, basically. For men, it's extremely important to be physical, to get your body moving, juices flowing, and the thoughts as well. Because you get a lot of this bottled up emotional anger, bottled up stress, and it leads to outcomes like this. So it's super important that you pick some, uh, some kind of physical endeavor as a man and try to master it. Make that your lifelong goal of constantly perfecting the craft and mastering whatever the physical pursuit you chose. Because that's literally the release valve on life's stressors being a man or a husband or a father. And this throbbing in my brain, it just got really, really bad. And that's it. I just made a decision just to leave. I didn't even tell my parents where we're going. And I ran through, I drove through a few, a few uh, red lights and I just parked my car on a double yellow line and I went into A&E and I, I told them what was happening. So after a while, they checked me to see if I had a tumor. You know, they did a neuro test. You know, they tell you to look this way, that way, walk or do something. They prick your eye. Huh? And uh, then they said, okay, you probably don't have a tumor. So then I saw the uh, on-duty psychiatrist and she said, do you have any stress at the moment? And I said, yeah, I have, I'm having these arguments with my, my girlfriend. And, that's a bunch and she said, okay, well, take this tablet for a few days, diazepam, which used to be called Valium, and that calms you down. And then we'll make an appointment to see a psychiatrist. So I took that for a few days, and I saw a psychiatrist. And the same question, you know, are you depressed? Uh, are you stressed out? Are you depressed? I said, yeah, of course I'm depressed. I've got all these problems with my girlfriend, um, you know. Uh, so he put me on Seroxac, which is Paxil, the SSR. More drugs. Jeez. And he says, don't worry, within a few weeks' time, you'll feel fantastic. And so... And you see how the industry, the psychological association, it's all dog shit. Instead of prescribing this man, start eating cleaner, being more active, going outside more, picking the physical pursuit that I told you guys, they literally hop him up on drugs that make him completely numb so he doesn't feel anything and never gets to solve his problems. It's a band-aid on a major issue he has, which is not being physically active and doesn't have a release valve for all the built up emotional pressure that he's getting. Because once he gets off the pills, the pressure keeps building up. He doesn't have good habits. And this is why this is happening to him. Well, okay, sure. Therapist, bro, put him on drugs like every other man. Numb him. That's when my like roller coaster of a, of a ride started. Mm. It did feel a, a lot better. But uh, yeah, little did I, did I know it was going to be so difficult to come off. You know, like 30 years later and still I'm having problems. Wow, permanent problems. But yeah, going back to like, I have no friends. I really have no friends. And the thing is, you see, it's not just that I have no friends. It's difficult to make friends. That's true. Because most people... You have to put yourself out there. It's not like it used to be back in the day. Look, you have to join groups. You have to go to where people get together, rock climbing, competitions, whatever, random stuff, biking groups, motorcycle groups. You you have to go on Facebook, find these groups, all this local stuff. If you really want to make friends, you have to go out of your way and put in effort. Most people relish on those memories of like so easy when you were a kid just to make friends. You were in the neighborhood playing with the stick and riding a bike and then some other kid was riding a bike and you said hello and that became your best friend, ride or die homie for like the next 40 years. But that's not the scenario. And you're a grown man. People have been set in their ways and have their own families and lives and responsibilities and you got to go out of your way. The same reason that they're in those groups is because they feel the same way as you and that's their time away from family, time away from their duties and responsibilities to do something for themselves. That's how they keep it all together. Men have forgotten that this was a much needed aspect of their life and they get completely lost in the husband role, father role, corporate cuck role. Well, normal. And uh, they'll see right through me. They'll see that I'm not saying that I'm not quite there, but I'm not the same as other people. And so what, what do you do? What does that even mean? You know, at least if you have a girlfriend, you know, you've got something in common, you know, S-E-X. I don't even think I could do that anymore because it's such a long time that, um, like for years, me and my wife, we slept in different rooms. It must be about 10 years or 12, no, 12 years. And his brain is fried from all those pharmacologicals. So ima imagine what that does to him permanently. He's still struggling. He's probably on and off that stuff or he's been altered in such a state where life just has a gray overtone to it. He just can't get excited for anything. Maybe even explains, probably explains why the most exciting part of his day is going to the supermarket. Dude, you were on drugs for years that permanently altered your brain chemicals. Of course, you seem dull as a person because you were dull, pharmacologically speaking. 
And you might ask, okay, how did you have two kids, an eight-year-old and a 12-year-old? Well, we met on two occasions, believe it or not. So she must have been like really fertile on those, those two occasions. <laughs> no pullout game. Yeah, maybe 20 minutes in, in, in 12 years and I got two kids out of it. But two kids that I love. You know, I'm not going to say anything Jeez. bad about my kids or her. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I didn't think that I'd be in this position now where I need to maybe find somebody else or enter into another relationship with a, another woman. You know, how, how, do, how the hell do I choose another woman now? And then there's the thought that, you know, maybe I'm at fault because the first relationship it was a disaster. The second one hasn't has ended. You know, I don't want to make any more mistakes. But the thing is, yeah, mistakes do happen. It's just it's just tiring. It's exhausting for me having to put all your like your your life force into uh, into a relationship with another person. And then after a few years, that person uh, changes their mind. It's funny how she changed her mind after. Um, after maybe working out that she's going to get half of all my sh all my stuff, yeah, it's funny. You know what I'm trying to say. You know, she she probably worked worked out that you know this person is a good catch because he's got lots of money, or his dad has lots of money. So one day, if, there, if there's a divorce or anything, then I'll get half of a lot of money. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm not. Sometimes it sounds like I'm bitter. I am, but I'm not. It's just that I don't know. I don't know what to do. You know, some people can you know not have friends and they're fine. They can be alone, but not. You can't keep moping around. You got to take action every day. Search for something to do, something out of your comfort zone. You're too comfortable doing the same old shit every single day. You're just boring. Maybe probably affected by the drugs you've been taking for years to numb all your feelings and emotions. But you need to jump into a whole different life, which is not hard to do. Buy a bike, go mountain biking, go riding for little clubs around you know, all those little bikers with their crazy souped up suits and race bikes and all that shit. Um, mountain climbing, go to the gym, go hiking in nature areas around you. If you have mountains, if you have rivers, lakes, streams, whatever, take up kayaking. There are options all around you, wherever you are. But none of this is ever going to happen until you make a change. You can complain all you want about your life going down the drain, nothing happening for you, lost your only friend, wife has become estranged, kids, the influence is all but gone practically, and all you're doing is talking instead of action to change everything. Yeah, we don't know really the whole story, his predicament, what he's like behaviorally with his family. Is he kind of a walking wallet? Is he spineless? Does he just supplicate to all their needs? He has no needs met of his own, and you know, that just, you lose respect from everybody, and you have no identity apart from the family. And dude, it's just a clusterfuck of problems that this guy's dealing with. But I would say he's a variation of that 27-year-old virgin with just kids. But he has a very negative self-image. He's a bit blunted emotionally. I will always just blame the pharmacologicals he was on. Uh, but his outlook on life is very, I don't, I don't want to say doomer or desperate, but certainly dark, lonely, and isolated. That's not going to help you get anywhere and do anything you're trying to do. But again, it's, it's easier said than done, especially when in, you're in this mental state and in this position. But honestly, what could you tell a man other than get up off your ass and make a difference in your life? Lonely. I found in my life that even when I had my mom and dad, I wasn't alone, but I was lonely. But now I'm going to be alone and that loneliness will, will increase, will get worse. I mean, I won't be alone because I'll have six dogs to keep me busy, I suppose. But on the other side, they can stress me out as well. I love my dogs, but you can't. Yeah, you can hug your dog, but you can't. Not a person. You know what I mean? Be romantically in love with your dog. Well, some people maybe are, but not me. Um, yeah, you can't talk about things. Like, I suppose if I found some uh, a nutty person, a person who is nutty enough to uh, have similar kind of ideas, like if you talk about the elixir of life and life extension and weird things like that and uh, alchemy, you know, maybe you know, maybe there's a chance of meeting someone that, um, how do you say, compliments me that we can that oh fits me. God. You know, like when you have a jigsaw puzzle. No, some person that fits you, you know, that... Another mistake. Um, I don't know what I'm trying to say. I'm tired. <laughs> now I'm going to do my shopping. And it's horrible going shopping alone. I'm so used to going shopping with my daughter. But now she's she's grown up, she's getting older, and uh, she's super strong, super strong. I was, I was arm wrestling with her, and she actually beat me. Not because my arms are strong, but I've got a problem with my right hand. My, my wrist is quite weak, so I'm thinking, bloody hell, I better shape up here. I better... <laughs> I better strengthen, strengthen myself. Otherwise, that 12 year old beating me, and a lot, you know, forget about 12 year old, but it's, you know, I mean, she feels quite proud that she's beaten. She feels quite strong. And she is really strong. So I'm going to have to start training to beat her, you know, give her a good workout. Really bad. <laughs> yeah. So another lonely day uh, shopping. It's, 
It's horrible when you see when you go shopping and you see couples because now it's Friday night. He's so focused on the external and not the internal problems he has. It's crazy because you could take the same exact dude, same thing, same meat vehicle and just literally direct him like a video game. Imagine you could get into his head with like a controller and just tell this guy what to do. If we were all watching this on live stream and I just plugged into this guy's brain and was controlling like a video game, literally get him to wake up at 6 a.m., go running, then go for a cruise around the park and then go to the store, buy some new stuff for the gym, then go work out. Then You know what I mean? Like I can make his day interesting by literally changing his behavior. I don't even have to change the man. He doesn't need a makeover. He doesn't need a whole new life. He doesn't need millions of dollars. Just literal decisions you make every single day that determine the outcome of your entire life. He is exactly where he needs to be, or I should say exactly where he deserves to be based on every action up until this point. This is the sum of all his actions. There's power. It's not, don't feel powerless when I say that, that when I'm saying this to you guys, that what I mean is there is a lot of power in knowing that your life can change on a dime if you just decide to. And uh, yeah, and me on my own, well, sometimes I see couples and they're, even old couples, like in their 70s, 80s, not 70s isn't old, but even in their 80s or 90s, they're still holding hands. And I don't even go out with my wife. I mean, when she goes to the soup, it, and this started years ago. The quote that came into my mind, comparison is the thief of joy. Does this man have any joy left in his body? I, I should have seen this happen. You know, I, should, well, I, I knew this was happening. When we used to go to the supermarket, she used to get a trolley for herself and do her shopping. And I used to do my own shopping. And she said, meet at the cashier. So she was like kind of separating Sure, he's a sweet guy. Nice dude. Um, he's a perfect example of what you should never grow up to be, which you should never replicate in a relationship later in your life, just the lifestyle you want to live. This man has not an ounce of joy in him, comparing himself to absolutely everything and is not taking actions in his life to change whatever it is that he wants to change that's giving him no pleasure, no joy, no happiness. For me, slowly, slowly over the years. So I, I think, is it me? You know, is it maybe I haven't found the person that's right for me, but along the way like it's really tiring i mean it's taken a lot out of me mentally emotionally see how his happiness depends on the person he's with and uh i don't want to go through another relationship and i don't want to go through another breakup it's just not worth it it's it, it just takes too much out of me i don't want to argue i don't want to do this and that i just if if i have a chance i'd like to fee, uh, f find someone who's that so just focus on yourself why do you have to keep finding someone i would like to find someone someone i can talk about whatever shit he said he wanted how about you just focus on yourself first make yourself happy first independently of any woman and then the cherry on top is finding someone that adds to your already joyous happy life this guy's going about it the complete opposite way he's looking for a person to fill him the void inside him is never going to work that down to earth uh, uh, maybe a simple girl, oh my God. Maybe some village somewhere in Asia, because I don't know, a, an English woman or a Western woman, for sure, she needs to be taken out here, spent money, spent money on her, and I don't know. I mean, yeah, someone said, Sue was saying, you know, one of my subscribers, there are really some nice, lovely women out there, but I don't know. And you'll drive them away too with this attitude and negativi negativity you have on life. You're, <laughs> he thinks that if he goes to Asia, he's somehow going to get this little feminine woman that's somehow going to bring him joy and open up his eyes to new possibilities and happiness. You're just going to be miserable in a completely different place. Again, saddled by kids. Again, with an Asian woman just yelling at you. Again, you'll be taken advantage of. Again, because you have no boundaries and you don't know how to say no, you don't respect yourself. Fix the problem inside first before you go looking for somebody else to fix you. Maybe I'm just too negative. You know? Maybe I, I just think that yes. women are evil. Yeah, yeah. Not no. all women, of course. Oh, you, know? Yeah, yeah. you know, when it comes to choosing someone to have a relationship with, it's as if like women are like mercenaries. You know, they, they, and it makes sense that they should choose someone who isn't broke, but isn't mentally broke as well, or emotionally broke, because they have to stay with that person. They're not going to choose someone who's got health problems because otherwise they're going to have to look after that person. So sometimes I think it's that men who are more romantic and they're more loving than women. Yeah, you know what I've been thinking? Men are now starting to buy into this more than women. The Disney mentality, we used to laugh about it all the time. Like a woman will do the Disney mentality thing and think a guy's perfect just because he shows interest and he's a chatter. But now men are starting to this this Disney love of, of loves me for me 
no matter what, you know, Bentley or a bust, like those lyrics from the 50 Cent song. It's ridiculous, dude. They're always going to pick men that are better. It's a competition and it'll always be that way up until you're 57. Nothing's going to change. Go to Asia, you'll be competing with other dudes your age that don't have your negative mindset and mentality. Is there more to go around? Probably, but you'll drive them away or be absolutely under their thumb in the same manner because you're mentally broke. That's the issue here. But a lot of men in the West have gotten sold on this idea that they should just be loved for who they are. And that's never been the case in history ever. It's what you can provide. Get over it. Your mommy is not who your wife is supposed to be. Women are more practical and logical. You know, they choose a person who has all these attributes, whereas a man just needs a pretty woman. She doesn't even have to be beautiful. She just slim-ish, you know, even chubby. It doesn't really matter as long as she's even slightly pretty, you know. Yeah, like a man would, like the average man would go for a, a, a pretty girl who isn't rich, who might have some kind of, uh, I don't know, some handicap or whatever, who works in McDonald's. A woman, a man, a, a woman would never go for that, you know. When I say never, okay, she, he, she might find, she might be, find him like uh, attractive, maybe she, he makes her laugh or whatever. But I'm talking about long term, you know, husband material. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's that's the case for most women. But he's right. Maybe there are a lot of women that are really nice, you know, yeah. and don't care about those things. Don't care about money. I've bloody never met one though. So th that's a problem. I've never met a woman like that. I've never even heard of a woman like that. You know, none of my friends have said, "Oh yeah, there's that that bird, that girl that you know, she doesn't care about money. She's so nice. She." Uh, um, and you also never met a man that doesn't care about beauty either. Welcome to biology. Doesn't go out at night clubbing, come come back at three o'clock in the morning or piss. I've, I've never heard of a woman that is so nice, like an angel. Disney mentality. And of course, they, they must exist. It's just that I've never, it makes sense that I've never heard of any or seen any because I never go out. I never, and I don't trust people on the internet. You know, you get, I've looked at some of those sites, uh, huh. women for look, looking for, for men, for boyfriends. And, uh, yeah, bloody hell, what they look for is like a big laundry list of um, things. And, you know, and uh, I feel that this guy's number one issue, he needs a woman to complete him. It all falls from there. Fatal mistake. I don't have enough to give any of these women. But I suppose I'm not looking for any of those women. I'm looking for just that one woman. And uh, love me for I'd me. like to meet a woman, like naturally, you know, maybe when I'm doing my boring shop. I'm so tired talking. Um, so there you go. Um, another lonely evening. For me self-imposed i'm gonna do some shopping and uh and then go home and waste away again and complain and I think, think a woman will solve said, your problems i think sue said you know fix yourself first he love yourself heal yourself first and then you'll be good for other people or at least you'll be healthy enough to to, to be able to take on maybe a, a relationship you know because maybe you, some people can't even take on it's too stressful just to have even a nice relationship where, where nothing goes wrong even that's stressful you know i think as you age things become even more stressful well, anyway, take your viewers yeah, advice. What I think I have to do is uh, work on myself. Yeah. And uh, forget about women. After I've healed from the various disease processes that I've, I've counted 36, mm -hmm. but after I've healed from all those, or even just a few of them, or in the process of healing, then I can be healthy and I can maybe think straight. Totally. He's, uh, he has 36 identified problems. Way to make a list, bro, that you'll probably never complete. At 57, like setting yourself up to fail. Really, your 36 things you found wrong with yourself, diseases. Come on, dude. And maybe get lucky. Find a nice bird on the, in the... Again, with this one vegetable aisle. Jesus. I don't know. I don't know if any of you guys have, are, are going through the same, same problems, loneliness. You know, people come up with like solutions. Oh, go out. You know, go out and go to the, the, the pub, go to the club, go... What's the excuse? Uh, come on. Uh, that's the easy part. No, well, not easy part. Even that for me is also difficult. But I'm, I'm saying, you know, I can visualize that. I can, I can imagine me. Okay, I wouldn't do it, but let's say I did it. I went to the uh, nightclub or I don't know, uh, a cafe or pub or something. Oh, cafe. And I met a girl again. The with initial women. effort. I can make the initial effort, but then having to keep that up is bloody stressful. And like for me, I don't have like when you have uh -huh. some mental health cool. issues, you don't have all that energy. You know, okay, so you, what? You, wh why are you trying to meet women if you don't have the energy? If it's so stressful for you to just have a conversation past a few... Co <laughs> Do you see what I mean when I say self-impose? If you haven't seen it by now, I know you're trying to empathize. I know you want to feel bad for the guy, but he needs a kick in the ass because he's literally running around in a circle coping with his problems that he's causing by himself. You have to invest all that energy into keeping someone happy or keeping someone interested. Then it, it, it's bound to fail. Um you know, normal wow. people, normal people, they have all that energy. 
So, you know, so some fix people, yourself. You know, if you're watching this, yeah, if you're lonely, you can, if you're in your 20s and 30s, and if you're just lonely and you're staying at home playing, you know, or not Pac-Man, but some other modern games, if you're a gamer, yeah, go outside and try and meet someone. But if you've got mental health problems, like anxiety, then you have to be careful because you can, you know, you can reach that tipping point where you don't have the the resources, the energy to, to deal with. Just remember what has happened to men. Used to be conquerors, used to build civilizations, they used to go to war at like 15 years old, started families, had 10 kids, blah, 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 blah. We're now at 57 in a car talking about if you're not careful going out and you got anxiety issues, you might blow a gasket and it takes you forever to recover and you don't have the energy to talk to somebody. Um, even like a nice, happy relationship. So, you know, that's what I Again, want. again, he's so fixated on having somebody. Worry about, you know. So, I don't know. Thumbs up if you like my talk. Thumbs down if you think it's a load of BS and I've just wasted your time. Um, I don't well, know what to say. Um, what am I supposed to say? Share, like, subscribe, and see you in the next video. Yeah. I just want to jack in a controller in his brain and just like have total control over what he does every single day. Like transform this guy in a span of a week. Crazy. Let's see what the comments say. Uh, my ex-wife cleared off with another guy 12 years ago. She's not only... Uh, she not only broke my heart, totally did not see it coming, but she took our four children, kept the house, financially raped me, and even paid the mortgage for 12 months while my replacement lived there. I did my best to maintain a relationship with the children, age one through eight when it happened, but the eldest two were soon turned against me. I know I now only have contact with my two youngest. Furthermore, she kept all of our joint friends. Sadly, barely days after I moved out, so my children weren't moved from house to house, my mother passed away. Six months later, my stepdad passed away. Twelve months later, my dad passed away. Like you, the highlight of my week was a trip to ASDA to get my shopping. Oh, jeez. 33, female, alone, no family or friends. Highlight of my day is daily walks in YouTube. You are not alone. And this guy's giving the same advice I said. Gerald, join a group, any group. Volunteer to help people. That's another incredible one. Volunteering at like uh, homeless shelters or food banks or animal shelters. That's incredible because he already has six dogs. So he's really good with pups. Um, of any age, the point is to get out of your head and help others. Long-term isolation is the worst thing a human can experience. The antidote to loneliness is to be of service to others and connect with your humanity. You're going to be okay. Get living and get healing. Excellent. And we'll end it on that one. That's literally all you have to do. I forgot all, the whole aspect of volunteering and what a life-changing event that is. To see other people in positions far worse than yourself and to see how content they are or happy they are or just positive they are when they're dealing with the situation that they're dealing. It makes you appreciate your life 100-fold. Yeah. Well, I'm curious what you guys think about this one. It's a bit slow and heavy, but appreciate everybody that's been tuning in. Uh, thoughts sign up to the second channel if you haven't videos about bucharest walking around i appreciate everybody that's been buying shirts and signing up for the private consult goes to the channel directly we don't take any sponsors for corporate cucks and we'll see you on the next one take care everybody